Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Y'all got forgiven. Um, uh, Gray House and Lent. Popping in for a little Sunday sermon, and I may get to come back later for a, a video, just, you know, relationship teaching or what have you. It's uh, soccer today, two soccer games, so just got done getting the tent ready for my wife. Now, today we're in 2 Timothy. Now, 2 Timothy, for those of y'all who are new to the Bible, is towards the, the, the back of the Bible. As you're getting closer to the revelation, so to speak. So you will see it in there. And we are in 2 Timothy, the second chapter. Now, we won't get to do these every Sunday now. So I'm doing my best to try to hop on here. But y'all forgive me. Sometimes people be told, what the fuck they serve? Hey, trying to be consistent. We're in the second chapter. And we are in the 15th verse today. And this is this is from my studies today of truth, just thinking about the truth and walking in truth, telling the truth of God, not just our truth and being upright, being useful. And this part is called an approved worker. Work hard. This verse 15, work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. Avoid worthless, foolish talk that only leads to more godless behavior. This kind of talk spreads like cancer, as in the case of Hymenaeus and Philetus. They have left the path of truth. Now, 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 notice Paul called names. See, a lot of times today, Chris, you ain't supposed to call names. Don't call names. Paul called names. Nah. And these people are in here forever. It's like, ooh, man, who is Hymenaeus and Philetus? Like, if I'm Hymenaeus and Philetus, I'm like, bro, you done put me in the word? You done put me in the scripture forever? See, that's, that's, that's why I say read your Bible, because now you learn the attributes of the Bible. Here go, names was called, but we got certain gyrating Christians, they don't want nobody name called. They have left the path of truth, claiming that the resurrection of the dead has already occurred. In this way, they have turned some people away from the faith. But God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with, with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his and all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. All who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. We can't get comfortable in evil. We can't want an excuse for evil. We must turn away from evil. In a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions, and the cheap ones are for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. If you keep yourself pure, pure now, now take some time and spend some time with that word pure. Google it, look up the definition, look up the synonyms, and then relate it to God in the Holy Spirit, pure. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean. And you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. Your life will be clean. See, the Lord will convict you to clean up even in your bathroom, meaning what you're doing in your bathroom if you live with other people. What you're doing in your bedroom, that's just you by yourself. See, the Lord will convict you to clean up every area of your life so that you could be useful. Run from anything 
that stimulates youthful lust. Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Now that's verse 22. So that means what you watching, what you listening to, if you go to a concert and somebody gyrating, if you watching a podcast and all they talking about is fornication and lust, that's stimulating those things. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. Listen to the word. It say, it ain't just say, but enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord. Because many say, Lord, Lord, but it say, enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord. Here go the key with pure hearts. So you hanging with people you go to church with, but their heart ain't pure. You know they trying to pimp God. They trying to play God. Don't work like that. Where we at? Six minutes. Again, I say, don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. This with your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. This is this is really also now nah, now nah, that that's relational, but this right here, this more pertaining to because remember we just mentioned H and P who then turn people away from the faith with a false doctrine. These foolish, ignorant arguments in this time, he ain't talking right there to couples, but he really talking about arguing with the Hebrew Israelites, arguing with the Pan-Africans, arguing with the Muslims, arguing with the people who got this other Christian doctrine, this doctrine that the dead has already arisen, arguing about these Foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone, be able to teach, and be patient with difficult people. Woo, that that right now. The Lord's over here tap dancing on my toes. Be patient with people. But now I don't argue with nobody in person. I don't argue with nobody. I, I share my message on here. I don't be going back and forth with people. I actually just text my family member and said, I am not going back and forth. And you like to go back and forth on stuff. I ain't going back on forth. Like this is the God I serve. This is how I'm living my life. These are the fruits of that service. And I'm telling you, you got a spirit on you. You need to pray. You need to fast and you need to change your life. You're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. You have to have works with your so-called faith. Again, I say, don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone, be able to teach and be patient with difficult people. Now, don't confuse kind with lie don't that that's right there because see right there that spirit a little ugly see that you supposed to be kind listen we're not being mean we just speaking god's truth <laughs> don't confuse the word kind with lie to everyone no you got to speak god's truth and god's truth if you're not living in it it's gonna hurt so what God says about sexual immorality, what God says about homosexuality, what God says about idolatry, that stuff going to hurt if you're not living the way he says you're supposed to live. But we walk in love in God's truth. Listen to me now. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Now, see, this right here was key especially in those times, because you'll get your neck slit. You will get stoned. You will get, so this also, so you got to understand the context, not to say that today we got the right. Now, some of y'all prophetess do not be gentle up there. 
Uh, 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 I thought your prophet was of God. They do not be gently up there in the pulpit now. And so this is the thing. Some people tell me when they come over here and they get the word, they say that they get a, a laugh sometimes. Now, I'm not telling no jokes, but how can you laugh if the word not gentle? Sometimes people accuse me of being too harsh, being too this. It's like, listen, I'm just speaking God's truth. Like that, it, it ain't my truth. I ain't write it. So this is what we got to understand. So remember now, gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts. Perhaps, perhaps, and they will learn the truth. Then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap, for they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. Woo! Hey, that's that's the word I, I would encourage you. To go read it for yourself. You know, I, I'm in this study Bible right here. So that I'm reading a that seemed like a translation. I'm in the life application study Bible. Some people thought it was uh, Tony Evans Bible. This this not Tony Evans Bible. He's sitting down right now. He had to sit down due to some sin that he was in. So I had this Bible before he sat down, but no, this is not his Bible. This life application study Bible. And so the top up there, you read the scripture and then at the bottom, it'll go ahead and talk to you and tell you what it means and the the part you know translation you you got to translate the words and from w the original language we still getting the word and it is divinely inspired by god in the study bible that is written by a man or a woman of today to break it down Ironically, sometimes when you reading the breakdown in the study Bible, remember that's not, that's their interpretation. That's not divinely inspired by God. Although hopefully we hope this person is a Christian who wrote it, you never know. And we hope that they wasn't in fornication, sexual immorality, which nine out of 10 times they were. And sometimes like when you walking with the Holy Spirit and you living in purity, when you read men and women of today translate like breakdown of the word you can read you can sense their sin you can sense if they living in sin because they will dance around certain things so that so you have to take it with a grain of salt on on that breakdown and you gotta also just be humble and sober before the lord and pray for wisdom knowledge and understanding so that it could speak to your spirit because we also have reading and comprehension. So if that's not your strong suit, you could misunderstand what you're reading. And then you could also misunderstand the breakdown. It could be taken out of context. So that's why it's good sometimes to read it in a couple of different or a few different translations, like on the Bible app on the phone, you could just go to the top and just click from King James Version to New Living Translation to Amplify to what and you could read the same scripture three, four, five different ways. And by the time you're doing that, you've done your due diligence. You and if you've prayed and asked for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you really start to understand what you're reading. <laughs> it doesn't mean that we won't make a mistake in the interpretation, but that's what God's grace is for. And God will show us something in our life or something somewhere, or have us bump into somebody who who knows a little more than us or who understands it differently or better. And, and they share it in love gently. And then we are, we can stand corrected, but never should we be just, you know, in the comments and all that arguing back and forth and, you know, condemning and someone discord and all that right there, foolishness that some people try to do. I keep my block button ripe and ready be tearing that block button up about every day so yeah if you come over here working for the devil you finna get blocked you finna get blocked 
Block it, delete. I got the hoodies over there that as soon as I feel a little more chill, I'm finna release them. Now you got to block and delete. And that's what sometimes we, we forget, that some people turn away from the faith. And, and they get called out. Like Paul called out H&P. You know, them, them, them individuals. He, he called them right on out. And their name is forever in the text. Imagine that. Imagine you turning from the faith and you going down in history. And you on the wrong side of history, Lord. Don't let me be on the wrong side of history. Hey, this is Tony Gaston. God bless you. Keep your head up. We'll talk soon.